Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we have further details on police investigations into the death of a teenager in what they believe is an animal attack in Knott County. And in the light of that attack, experts are warning how to defend yourself if you find yourself in danger outside. And a widely supported bill to put a cap on insulin costs here in the Commonwealth is moving closer to becoming law. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6.33 on Thursday, February the 20th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Madison did the telethon last night, so she's off this morning, but you have both Brandon and I, so you're still in fine hands. Let's bring Brandon in this morning, get a breakdown, and Brandon, people are going to see that blue on the radar and think that they might be seeing some snow. Some are and some aren't this morning. Exactly, and that's basically the trend of the forecast. No heavy snow at this point, but some blue showing up, as Will mentioned. Let's take a look. Live pinpoint Doppler radar. Not most of, or most of it is not reaching the ground this morning. In areas where it's a little bit heavier, you see that uh, basically transition line right there between uh, Claiborne and Campbell counties down toward Knoxville. Of course, that's some rain, but temperatures down that way are too warm. We'll show you those here in a little bit for it to be snow, so it could be some rain or maybe just a touch of winter mix. Outside WYNT this morning, very quiet, no major issues here. 39 in Jacksboro down in Campbell County, so again, too warm there. 36 borderline in Middlesboro, Williamsburg, and Somerset. 30s across the region this morning with some spots closer to freezing. So that's anywhere between exactly what it was yesterday and a couple degrees warmer or colder. So that's the trend so far. And the trend today, we should get up into the mid to upper 30s depending on if there's any snow that comes through or if we see any sunshine, which is possible in those northern counties closer to the Mountain Parkway I-64 corridor, especially later this afternoon. The extended forecast on the way here in just a little bit. Will? All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, we now know more about a disturbing animal attack case. Just after 6 on Tuesday evening, Kentucky State Police responded to a home off of Kentucky 1102 in the Emelina community of Knott County. Soon after, the coroner pronounced a 13-year-old boy dead. I talked with police about where the investigation stands now. Kentucky State Police say it is something nobody should have to deal with. With the result of what happened to this, uh, to this child yesterday, you know, that's that's as bad as it can get in these hills. A 13 year old boy was pronounced dead with gruesome injuries. Their initial determination was the death was caused by injuries that were consistent with an animal attack. Tuesday night, rain fell on eastern Kentucky, making the initial investigation difficult. Last night, obviously, uh, the weather conditions and lighting uh, hampered uh, the initial uh, parts of the investigation. Uh, but uh, our investigators or detectives were able to um, make some determinations along with working with the coroner. As officials continue to work through the details, one overwhelming question still remains overall involved. However, uh, at this point, there's no way that they can determine exactly what type of animal it was. So uh, still there are questions as to what type of animal it may have been. But state police hope Wednesday's autopsy sheds more light as to what happened on that mountainside. In Knott County, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. And just like that, I'm back in Perry County. Will State Police are not releasing the child's name because they have not ruled out the possibility of a criminal act. However, right now they do not believe it was anything but a terrible accident. Now into the wake of this tragedy, we heard from some experts about safety while out in the wilderness. Craig Caudill is a certified master naturalist and says instances of wild animal attacks are rare, but there are things you can do to make them even more rare. If you see a dangerous animal coming your way, experts say to back away. Do not run and do not turn your back to the animal. Cottle also worries that things like this can spark fear, but he doesn't want it to deter anyone from enjoying the outside. We live in a beautiful part of the world where things are safe and it's, it's not worthy of concern, over concern of uh, wild animals attacking humans. Police have not identified the victim of the attack, but they do say that they have performed an autopsy. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office issued a golden alert for a missing Williamsburg teen. 18-year-old Perry Reed, pictured here, went missing on Tuesday. 
Officials say he requires daily medication for a heart condition. If you have any information on his location, you are asked to call the Whitley County 911 at 606 549 6017. A parole board has recommended a Pulaski County man be released five years after he was sentenced in a deadly crash. James Harmon pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the crash that killed Sandra Drury. He was sentenced to just 15 years. Just yesterday, we told you about how Drury's family was in support of Harmon's parole. Drury's son John says he believes there is good Harmon can do in the world. Meanwhile, voters have a question, could have a question on their ballots asking if they want to limit when a governor can pardon someone. A Senate panel approved a bill yesterday calling for that amendment to the state constitution. It comes after Governor Matt Bevin issued hundreds of pardons and sentenced commutations in his last days in office. Some of the people he pardoned were convicted murderers and rapists. The scariest thing is not what happened in December, but what could have been much, much worse. For we invest in one person the power to let anyone out of jail. The Senate committee passed it unanimously, but some had concerns of the bill's impact on capital punishment cases. Now also advancing in Frankfurt, a bill to limit out-of-pocket costs for insulin. The bill cleared the House and now heads to the Senate. The proposal would limit out-of-pocket costs at $100 per prescription for a 30-day insulin supply for people with commercial health insurance plans. The bill supporters say in the past 14 years, the price of insulin has jumped by more than 550%. A Senate panel also voted to advance a new version of Marcy's law. The bill is another constitutional amendment to require victims of crime to be notified throughout the judicial process. The controversial bill passed the General Assembly and was signed into law two years ago, but it was overturned by a Supreme Court decision because of the way the voter question was worded. Once again, the committee heard from some of the same crime victims who spoke out in favor of the bill, but some say its passage could have unintended consequences. Until the four cases were transferred to Frankfurt, our local newspaper man was my victim's advocate because that's how I learned of court dates. Rather, this legislation seeks to modify our Constitution in such a way that protects only a slim minority of crime victims. The bill includes a provision that would also require crime victim families to be notified in the event of a pardon being issued. It now goes to the full Senate. Lots of blue showing up on live pinpoint Doppler radar, but not a lot of it reaching the ground so far this morning. The green down to our south is reaching the ground. Could be some rain there as well. So temperatures kind of supporting some of that, especially down to the south. 39 Jacksboro right now, 36 Williamsburg, Middlesbrough, Somerset, some 35s across to London from Harlan down to Hazard. And then you see lower 30s over in those uh, big sandy counties there and up toward I-64. Out the door forecast today, snow is possible across parts of the region, especially south south of the Howe Rogers Parkway and Highway 80 corridor and then cloudy skies for most of us until we get later into the day where we see maybe some sunshine late and especially those northern counties and then clouds will start to clear overnight. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Here's a brief look at what's ahead. We recap last night's fiery debate in Las Vegas where the top six Democratic presidential candidates went head to head just days before the Nevada caucuses.